Hello. Today we're going to be looking at gamma radiation and how it follows an inverse square law. We're going to look at some footage taken of an actual experiment in the lab and analyse the results. Here we can see the arrangements for the gamma ray experiment. On the left hand side we have a Geiger-Muller tube which is connected to a counter which can be seen in the background. You'll notice on the right hand side there is no source placed into the holder and so we are merely measuring background radiation. You can also see a stand, boss and clamp which will be used in a later video to look at how different materials absorb radiation. For now, the counter has been started and we are measuring background radiation. As you'll see at the end of this clip, the background count is 18 counts in one minute. This is a slightly lower value than usual for this laboratory, which tends to have around 0.5 Becquerel background radiation. Here we can see the Geigam on the tube from the front. Beyond the broad plastic mesh is a mica window, keeping inside argon gas. Radiation can pass through the window, ionising the argon gas inside to produce free electrons. Inside the GM tube are a pair of electrodes with a large potential difference across them provided by the counter, usually around several hundred volts. The free electrons created by the ionising radiation are attracted to the positively charged anode and flow around a circuit through a resistor which creates a small signal that can be read by the counter. The counter, once started, takes these signals and counts them. This particular counter can be set to read for specific periods of time. In the case we've just seen, for example, 60 seconds, as shown by the circled upward arrow at the top of the display. However, shorter or longer times can be set. The source used for this experiment is a cup source of americium 241. It is named a cup source as it is shaped like a small, thick steel cup, with the opening to the bottom of the source as seen here. It also has a stem on top, so that it can be placed in a holder, as shown in this photograph, ready for the experiment. To vary the distance between the GM tube and the source, an optical bench is used. This has measurements along the side and fiducial marks on the holders to allow for precise placement of the various components. Here we can see the base of the GM tube holder aligned with 30 cm and the base of the source holder at 40 cm. This does not mean that the edges of the GM tube and source are 10 cm apart. As seen in the video, they are both closer than their base markers. However, this will provide a baseline for the distances used, and as we cannot know where a particular argon atom will be ionised within the GM tube, there will almost always be some systematic error in this experiment. However, with careful analysis later, we may be able to determine approximately what this systematic error is, should we so wish. The most important thing to consider is that the distance between cup source and GM tube window is at least 5 cm, which means that the alpha radiation produced by the americium 241 will have mostly been absorbed by the air in between, and no longer be a significant factor in the experimental results, leaving us only with gamma radiation. A reading taken at this initial distance shows a final value of 1009 counts in one minute. The source holder is then moved backwards in intervals of 5 cm, taking a reading for one minute each time. The distances used and readings obtained are shown. Repeats are taken using the same distances, and the final counts for those are also now shown.
if you'd like to analyse the results for yourself, pause the video here. You'll need graph paper or a spreadsheet.